Hi. You might have heard that we at Christ Church Cathedral have a mission statement. We seek a deeper relationship with God and each other in Jesus Christ through celebrating the sacraments faithfully, proclaiming the gospel boldly, embracing diversity joyfully, and serving all passionately as a cathedral. A mission statement, any mission statement, is only words until we begin to live it. When we start trying to live it, we usually realize that the words we thought we had clear meanings have different possible interpretations. When we start trying to live it, we usually realize that even if we agree on what the words mean, sometimes it's not always clear how best to follow them. We've spent the last year and a half as a diocese and as a congregation discerning and affirming this mission statement for Christ Church Cathedral. And now an opportunity has arisen, and it's going to be the first of many, for us to explore what it means. To base a decision not on the opinion of one person, the dean, but praying and struggling with who Jesus is calling us to be through living this mission. Several months ago, I was approached by a small non-denominational faith community called Pursuit, and I was asked if they could explore using half of Schuyler Hall as worship space on Sunday mornings. Believing that at our best, all who try to follow Christ should try to work together, I agreed to a trial run of one Sunday, which happened in early July, and this was for the explicit purpose of seeing if the space worked and if further conversation was even necessary. Shortly thereafter, they approached me again and said they were interested in using it on a regular basis. Now, Pursuit is a Christian community, but one that differs from us in many ways. They have a more literal reading of Scripture, and that means while there is much we share, there is also a lot on which we differ, particularly on the role of women in the church and in the inclusion of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender persons in the life of the church. Now, I have been clear from the start about who we are as an Oasis congregation, and this wasn't news to them. And they have also said repeatedly that they believe what we hold in common in Christ is stronger than our admittedly significant differences. But those differences are significant. And because of that, I believe this request from Pursuit represents an opportunity for us to explore what we really mean by two pieces of that mission statement. Proclaim the gospel boldly, embrace diversity joyfully. And so with that in mind, I brought their request to chapter last week. And we had a lively discussion where people around the table spoke plainly and listened deeply. I was proud of your chapter, and I think if you'd been in the room, you would have been too. We dove into the difficult and messy gray areas. There were strong opinions expressed on either side, and plenty of people who just didn't know. One chapter remember, remarked during our debriefing at the end that they thought this might have been the best conversation we had ever had. The questions that we wrestled with were profound. Among them were, are there limits to the diversity we will embrace? This group does not share our values regarding women and LGBT persons. Would we allow a blatantly racist group to use the cathedral? What is the hope of hearts being changed? Could our witness to the full inclusion of women and LGBT persons be transformative? Do we testify to embracing diversity by sharing our space? Or do we better do this, better proclaim the gospel boldly, by testifying to our understanding of how God created human diversity, by standing with those who continue to suffer from anti-LGBT readings of Scripture? Is a commonality of trying to follow Christ the most important thing? Or are there legitimate reasons we cannot be in relationship with fellow Christians? Or maybe even just this kind of relationship of sharing space? What is the appropriate level of relationship with communities that differ from us? What rules would we expect them or anyone to follow? What's the difference between having someone come in for a one-time event and a consistent use of the space? Are there different standards? Does the very presence in our building of a group who do not believe God creates people, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and loves them as they, are, as they are, compromise the safety of our space? Even if we decide there is virtue in this relationship, is our community able to bear it, particularly given the depth of damage done to women and LGBT persons by other church communities with similar theologies? Where chapter came down is that we need more information. 
Chapter recognized we should not automatically lump pursuit in with other communities that many had had incredibly damaging experiences with, that the love of Christ calls us not to stereotype them, but to allow us to look each other full in the face and see what there is to see. So a smaller group of chapter, Tim Smith, Tom Gardner, Jennifer Grant, Amy Courtright, and I, agreed to extend an invitation to Pursuit's leadership to do three things. The first is to join us here for worship at Christ Church Cathedral. See what our community is about. Second, to join them for worship at their current location, to see what their community is about. And then finally, to sit down for a time of prayer and conversation. In short, we have decided to seek and serve Christ in them and respect the dignity they have as human beings created in God's image, to enter into conversation and learning. And their leadership has accepted this invitation. It is very clear from the conversations that I have had with members of this cathedral community that the wide range of opinions on this expressed in chapter are mirrored throughout our community. Some have expressed hurt and anger that I would even allow us to enter into this conversation. I wish that pain and anger were not present, and yet that pain is not new. It is old and very real pain that this conversation is bringing to the surface. It hurts. But yet this is another opportunity for us internally as a congregation to embrace the diversity in our own community. Diversity is hard. That means for those people for whom the possibility of pursuit coming here opens up wounds and causes fear and pain, it is for the rest of our community to stand in that space together, to not turn away from it, but to realize the depth of it, and as I preached on Sunday, even our own corporate responsibility for it. It is up to all of us to truly hear and understand the history behind that pain. The same way that the stories that emerge from our Black History Month observances and our exploration of race at Christ Church Cathedral are not just for the black members of this community, but perhaps even more for those of us who are white. To look together and pray together and talk together and learn together about what it means to move forward together. What it means together to live into that broader mission statement of the whole Episcopal Church to restore all people to unity with God and each other in Christ. And my experience is it is almost always messy. So in clothing, closing, I want to say a few short things. First, I made the choice to do a video, which I really haven't done before, because I didn't want this to be words on a page, even imperfectly through this medium. I wanted you to hear my voice, and I wanted you to see my face. And I want you to know how committed I am, and your chapter is, to hearing your voices and seeing your faces. And so please, if you have thoughts, if you're struggling, if you have firm convictions, please come and talk with us face to face. Next, I am absolutely committed to Christ Church Cathedral being a safe place for all people to be as God created us and to be shaped by God into what God dreams for us. That means I am absolutely committed that Christ Church Cathedral be a safe place from harm for our gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, black, white, conservative, liberal, everyone to be a safe place from harm. I am also absolutely committed that Christ Church Cathedral never be a safe place from change. I'm absolutely committed to us not being a community that is ruled by fiat of the dean. I have no problem in claiming authority, but I believe that my authority is rooted in presiding at the Eucharistic table, which is not a dictatorial act, but an act of gathering the community around the presence of Christ leading us in laying our lives on the table with Christ and helping us together discern what new life happens and we, what we are being invited to receive. That is the kind of leadership I'm trying to provide here. And that is the kind of leadership your chapter is sharing in. I am absolutely committed to speaking plainly and listening deeply. As we work through this together, please remember our rules for respect. They're on our cathedral website. I'm putting this video on my blog, I hope, 
and they're below it on there. The video doesn't end up on my blog because I can't figure out how to do that. No, you can go to my blog, cccdean.blogspot.com and find them there. These rules for respect are critical because they, they're how we bear Christ to one another. And the first rule of respect is if you have an issue with someone, talk to that person and not about them. And the other rule for respect that I want to draw out is when we're in conflict with each other, the only email we should send is, when should we get together? Finally, I am absolutely committed to the cathedral as a force for reconciliation. To recognize that God never writes off anyone and God never says this has nothing to do with me. We are here for each other's conversion, not just us in this congregation, but all of us in creation in the world. There is not a person ever created that God does not have the power to bring revelation to us through. We are here to be a sign to the city and region that things which are being cast down are being raised up and things which had grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him whom, through whom all things were made, Jesus Christ our Lord. It is an honor to be your priest. It is an honor to be the dean of Christ Church Cathedral. I am going to continue trying to do what we are trying to do here which is to gather us around the questions, to ask the questions that we think Jesus would have us ask, to lay our lives on the table with Christ and to become something new in return. If you have any thoughts about this, if you have any thoughts about any of these, any questions, just want to sit and pray together, whatever, please be in touch with me and we'll make it happen. Please be in touch with your wardens and your chapter members. They will make it happen. And please pray for Christ Church Cathedral and know that you are prayed for by this community as well.